Coming up, we're talking a wild outlaw weekend at Cedar Lake, a big win for Brandon Shepard, complete domination from Brent Marks, and a lot more from the weekend. Let's go. Today is Monday, July 4th, 2022. Welcome into Dirt Tracker Daily. I'm Justin Fiedler. Happy Independence Day. If you're out and about today doing fireworks things and partying, make sure you are safe out there. Before we get going, I wanted to say thank you for our first million YouTube views. We crossed over that late last week. Uh, that's a really incredible number. The next goal for the year is 10,000 YouTube subscribers. I think we can do that by year's end. Um, if you guys keep watching and listening, we'll keep rolling along with these shows. There may not have been a set of races over the weekend with more drama than the Word of Outlaws sprint cars at Cedar Lake, so we'll start there. First, right off the top, Jacob Allen and Brock Zierfoss were your two winners. I doubt anyone had an Allen Zierfoss weekend anywhere on their 2022 Outlaw bingo card. Allen's win was his third of the year, which means only Carson Macedo and Sheldon Hoddenshield have more wins than Jacob does. Uh, he won't contend for the championship here, uh, but he is clearly capable of winning more this season. As for Zierfoss, this was his first outlaw victory since winning at the Grove way back in 2017. That was before he was even a series regular. The Pennsylvania driver is good for a top 10 here and there, uh, but only has scattered top fives over the past six seasons. Uh, he just has eight top fives in his past 177 races. So Zierfoss is only getting top fives once every about 22 racers or so. So this win was definitely a surprise. And remember, too, his outlaw win that he had at the Grove was not in his own car. This one was in his own car. And for a team that has struggled as much as those guys have, Saturday's one will be a very nice shot in the arm for them. I also wanted to point out that Donnie Schott's leading laps on Friday was the first time we've seen the 10-time champion out front in a race since he won the opener at Volusia. That was back in February, a span of 32 races. In the point standings, even without a win, Brad Sweet was able to extend his advantage uh, thanks to finishes of second and third while his rivals did have issues. David Gravel, Logan Schuhart, and Hodden Shield all managed two top tens each for the weekend, but they had to battle for them with all three eventually taking trips to the work area on, on one or multiple nights. I think the biggest loser of the weekend was obviously Carson Macedo. He led laps Friday before settling for fifth, and then Saturday uh, was caught up in a crash and could not return to the racetrack because of pretty gnarly frame damage. I know if you were watching on Dervision, you heard someone uh, yell and kind of bring up that the 49 car uh, was able to go back out in the past with damage, but Macedo's team was told they couldn't go back out. But I don't care what the perception is with the officials and people think they're favoring Sweet in this. In no way was it safe for that 41 car to return to the race with brakes in the frame on both sides of the car. Whoever said that in the work area was just flat wrong. This sport is dangerous enough as it is without sending guys onto the track with destroyed frames. Completely irresponsible comments there. And I know you guys are going to want uh, to know whatever information I can provide about the incident involving the official and a TSR crew member in the work area from Saturday night. But to be honest, I didn't really reach out to anyone to find out any further details than what was evident on Dervision. I, like you, have seen the video. Uh, I'm not going to get involved in rumors and gossip about this stuff. If you want that, you can find your way to the forums and the Facebook group. Uh, things were very clearly said that set the official off, and he chose the wrong moment and the wrong way to address it. Obviously, you should be putting hands on anyone. But this definitely felt like something that has history beyond just what we saw on Dirt Vision. The series mentioned they are investigating, uh, investigating the incident, and I'm sure we'll get some sort of statement in the future, but don't expect a full rundown on details to be made public. Uh, you will get probably some sort of statement, but a lot of this, you know, punishments and whatever happens will probably be kept to kind of internal here. This wild outlaw season continues Friday at 34 Raceway in Iowa. I would not sleep on any of these races going forward. We've talked a bunch lately about Tim McCready starting to run down Brandon Shepard with the Lucas Oil Land Model Dirt Series, and Sheppy must have been feeling that pressure because that Rocket team turned up the wick over the last few races. Shepard was a prelim feature winner on Saturday at Muskegon County and followed that up with a dominating win on Sunday, earning over $30,000 for the victory. That was his first win since uh, East Bay way back at the start of the season with Lucas. Over the last five nights, including the Firecracker 100 finale, Shepard now has finishes of 4th, 5th, 6th, 1st, and 1st. Leaving the weekend, the gap back to T-Mac is now 55, uh, not huge, uh, and actually was smaller before. He, he stretched that out a little bit, uh, and I think we've got ourselves a battle here headed to Davenport and Deer Creek this weekend. 
Ricky Thorn Jr. is also trying to claw his way into the fight and has made up ground on the top two. A win on Friday night at Portsmouth was just what that 20RT team, uh, team needed. Uh, and even though they had a flat on Sunday after sitting on the pole, they still managed a top 10 result. You kind of flick, uh, flip over and look at the outlaw side. It definitely feels like Dennis Herb Jr. is running away with that championship, but I like how this summer is shaping up with Lucas. Shepard versus McCready is a great battle, and it could get really interesting if RTJ can stay hot here. The Lucas season continues on Wednesday, so we'll be right back to racing here. And I want to hit on a bunch of other things from the weekend, but before I do, I just wanted to say a quick thanks to YouTube commenter Jim for the super thanks on my Friday show. Appreciate you tuning in and for the cash, my friend. Very much appreciated. As expected, Brent Marks wrapped up the Pennsylvania Speed Week title over the weekend. He won Friday at the Grove and Saturday at Port Royal before finishing second to Danny Dietrich in the finale on Sunday at Sealands Grove. Marks' Speed Week results look like this. He went second, third, first, third, first, 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 second. That's an insane run of really good races during Speed Week. If you add to that this, uh, you know, add, add to his stats for this year, he's got three outlaw wins plus two all-star victories. Uh, and 2022 is already shaping up to maybe be one of the best to date for Marks. And some are already starting to wonder uh, about possible crown jewel wins for Marks. Now you start talking about the Knoxville Nationals, the Kings Royal. He's got wins at both tracks now in his career. Uh, so definitely could be a factor here later in the year. Anthony Macri was notably missing on Sunday at Sealands Grove after contending all week. He tweeted they were going to miss the finale due to, quote, personal reasons, but that they would be back racing next week and hope everything is good there for Macri and his group was uh, a little bit of a bummer to see those guys missing at Sealands Grove. And if we take the wings off with USAC, we had wins at Lincoln Park for CJ Leary and Justin Grant over the weekend. Through 16 races, we've had six different winners with the USAC sprint cars. Brady Bacon leads the way with four wins. Unfortunately for him, though, he lost ground in the standings with Grant winning on Saturday and Bacon finishing 11th. With big money on the line this week at Husets for the USAC Nationals, Grant is now 46 points ahead of Bacon and Robert Ballou, Logan Seavey, and Emerson Axum complete the top five. On the late model side, weekend summer nationals uh, winners included Bobby Pierce, Brian Shirley, and Jason Fager in a wild one on Sunday. On the modified side, Trent Young won Friday. Lucas Lee was your winner on Saturday. And Nick Hoffman won Sunday from 20th. That's insane. There wasn't much change in the standings, though. Pierce still leads Shirley on the late model side, and Hoffman still maintains that big gap back to Kyle Steffens in the modified points. We did, though, have a change atop the, the, the championship standings with the ASCS National Tour over the weekend. Remember, 360 sprint cars. Wayne Johnson entered the weekend as the points leader, but leaves in second behind defending champion Blake Hahn. Between Boone County and Joaquini, Hahn went third, second, and second, while Johnson went sixth, ninth, and 24th. Johnson's Sunday at Joaquini went bad early on in the feature when he went for a big ride in turn three. He was okay, but he's now 41 points behind Hahn. The weekend ASCS winners included Matt Covington, Jake Buback, and Zach Blurton getting uh, his first career series victory. Other open wheel winners from the weekend included Aaron Reitzel at Knoxville, Corey Day in Sprint Car Challenge Tour Action at Stockton, and Nate Dussel won the Hampshire Classic at Waynesfield. Other weekend late model winners included Donald McIntosh with the Ironman Series at Boyd. Zinnis Herb Jr. won with the MLRA at 34 Raceway. And Dona Marcoulier grabbed $10,000 at Merritt. And then also Sunday night at Fonda, Stuart Friesen bagged the $10,000 Firecracker 50 with the Short Track Super Series at North Region Modifieds. Before we close out today, a couple of quick news items for you. First, the Super Dirt Car Series race scheduled for July 13th at the Bloomsburg Fair Raceway has been canceled because series and track officials don't believe that new clay that was recently put down on the track surface will be ready in time. And also the upcoming July 9th NARC race at Petaluma has been lost due to the ongoing tire shortages. There's also been some other cancellations out in California because of tire shortages and water shortages. So if you're out there, make sure to pay attention uh, if you're trying to go to the racetrack here anytime coming up soon. There are six shows on the streaming schedule today. Flow Racing has the Southern All-Stars Late Models Plus Racing from Silver Dollar and Placerville. And Speed Sport has action from Nodak and Cottage Grove. To see the full daily streaming schedule with links to watch, visit dirttracker.com slash watch tonight. That's it for the show today. Have a good Monday. Enjoy your Independence Day as well. If you have thoughts about the topics on today's show, please leave them in the comments below or tweet at me. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. We'll see you tomorrow for more Dirt Tracker Daily.